All right, broadcasting to all attendees. Hello, everybody. Let me open up my chat screen. Let me open up my Q&A screen. I see participants starting to come in right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll give everybody a couple seconds to jump in here um, before we get started. My, I've now closed my Q&A screen. Cool, I've reopened it. Uh, all right, so Sam, thanks for being here. Let me introduce you guys to this guy as we're having everybody get in here. So one of the things that Orange County Realtors wanted me doing was bringing people to interview who you're not normally getting to take a look at, who you're not normally hearing from. And so they kind of left me to my own devices and let me choose who's going to be here. And I think we've had some great guests in the past. We're going to have some great guests in the future as we do these once or twice a month. But we have an awesome guest today. So let me tell you real quick just a little bit about him. Uh, and I'm doing this from memory. I don't have anything written down. But Sam and I first met several years ago. We were sharing a stage somewhere together. I want to say it was actually for an Orange County NAREP thing. And then uh, we kind of developed a friendship. And then we found ourselves traveling to Dubai together to speak at the World Real Estate Congress in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and so we got to be really good friends on that, that trip. And since then, we've just kept in touch with each other. And um, so it's really great that I bring my friends on for you guys. I know that. But check this out. He's a lot more than just a friend. This is what's going to be really impressive for all of you. Um, Sam is not only a superstar real estate agent, but now he's taking on more of an ownership role. Uh, last year, he had the, the what, what, okay, so real quick, fifth largest ever? Fifth largest ever. Yes. Fifth largest sale ever, just under 120 million. Um, every once in a while, if he looks familiar, you might see him suited up. Um, and you've maybe seen him on millionaire listing uh, agent in LA or maybe the New York version. You might have seen him with that guy from Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary, going through his world famous shark house that he had in Beverly Hills that had like a live shark tank in the house where they were cruising around. And so I thought, you know what, this would be fun to talk about because you're kind of working multiple markets too. Now you're doing some stuff which you're going to talk about in a different state. You're still doing your Beverly Hills thing. You're not horrendously old. Um, right. And so pretty young in the, pretty young in the business. Um, and you've got some really good ideas. So I just thought this would be a cool thing. He's like, what are we going to talk about? And I was like, I don't know. We'll just figure it out. We're just going to wrap. Uh, I don't do prep calls. We just talk about what comes up. So, um, let's talk about that. And number in your top 10 for Engel and Volkers, uh, Local. in the world, right? Yeah. So we were top 10 globally at Angle Volkers, we were in, uh, I was number 49 in the country on the thousand list. And I think we were 19th or 17th in the state of California. So. And for those of you who are like, oh yeah, but he's probably got a gargantuan team. All those guys have a hundred agents under them. And so all their numbers add up to do that. So tell me about your team. It's me basically. Well, now I have, I have two members on my team down in LA. Uh, but before that, uh, it was me. It was just me. So that's it. No assistant, nothing. So it's just a solo guy, you guys and gals out there. Just a solo guy out there swinging the bat. Um, he's, not, he's not delegating off all the crap at work, like inspections. He's not like, well, you just go show him and I write it up. He doesn't have 22 people prospecting for him. It's just you out there doing, just you out there doing work, right? That's it, man. Yeah, you listen, the only person you can trust is yourself at the end of the day, right? So yeah. you got to do it. Exactly. Right, you got to do it yourself. So we're going to get into what you're doing here in a little bit. But let's start real quick about how you got into the business, how long you've been in the business, and how this wild, fun ride got started for you. Because from the first, when I first met you, it was like a couple years. So it's been more years longer than that now, but it still hasn't been all that long. No. So let's talk about how you got into the business and how you grew your business and you know, like all things, you kind of got a lucky break once because you're in the right place at the right time, grinding. You always have to add that, right place, right time while grinding, uh, and it opened up some doors for you. So tell that story if you would. Uh, yeah, 100%. So um, <laughs> to, to start it off, uh, make a long story short, I originally started real estate when I was in, in, in Arizona. I was going to Arizona State, and my roommate had kind of forced me to go to this 
um, this seminar about wholesale foreclosures. Uh, we started doing this thing called wholesale foreclosures in, in, in college. And luckily we put ourselves through college. We paid off college, we bought a house. So I was one of the lucky ones that went to college and, and made a, a few bucks. I'm not in debt, so thank God, knock on wood. Um, but then from there, I worked in entertainment. I used to work at CAA uh, for some time. I worked at Paradigm uh, Entertainment as well. Uh, I worked as a junior agent. I found out that, man, I really don't like entertainment that much. I just was really going for the, the negotiation side or money side of it. And, you know, I, I kind of came back full circle to real estate and said, listen, let's try to do this. Um, started out in LA as a real, realtor about 13 years ago and uh, no money in my pocket, no, 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 no backup, didn't know anyone. So I really had to just grind, like you said, uh, from the beginning uh, without knowing it. So it was a, the, the biggest thing for me when starting off was relationships, right? Because this is a relationship business. Completely. It's just connect with as many people as possible. Um, and as you said, look, we all, all of us that have done well at one point or another have, have caught a lucky break, right? And so, uh, you know, when I first started, I, I would, uh, at first I, I made it so that I knew everything. I think everyone knows this story. I spent six months basically studying the market from head to toe, knowing every single street, every single property and sold, who the biggest developers are, who the biggest agents are, what price per square foot was in certain locations. Because I knew if I'm gonna go out against these higher end agents, the, the Altmans, the, the Bond Street uh, partners, Mauricio, Kurt Rappaport, so on and so forth. Um, I knew I had to have, my, my edge was just knowledge for the market, right? Yeah. And so I wanted to be able to just speak off the top of my tongue of what's going on in the market globally, you know, nationally and locally, uh, because immediately they're going to say, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's, he's done his due diligence. I know a lot of bigger agents that can't even tell you the price per square foot of certain locations that they actually focus on. So I found that to be my, my number one thing when, when starting. And then, and once, uh, and once I, I, I had the, you know, the, the, the presence or the, the knowledge that I, I felt I needed, that's when I went out. And I, so I would go to, you know, I always talk about art galleries. I went to the Beverly Hills Hotel, the, uh, the Beverly Wilshire, um, the Peninsula, the Bel Air Hotel. And I, I and bring them food and say, I'm your guy. So, uh, you know, my biggest thing was just getting in front of as many people as possible and find, and, and going where the money is, right? Um, so that's kind of how I started, man. That's, that's, that's yep. where it started and just the focus of it. So, uh, quick side note for everybody. This is a zoom and we're coming to you from multiple States and locations. Now, if I drop, Sam will pick up the ball and talk. If Sam drops, I'll pick up the ball and talk. There's no way we're both dropping at the same time. Um, nope. if you drop, you guys just log back on. Uh, so one fair warning and two, Hey, we've got the chat bar. You guys can talk on that. Q and a is really good for actual questions, chat for chat with each other. Q and a for questions for Sam, please. Um, so don't be shy, please use it. Ask some questions as we're going through. Don't wait till the very end. And then we ran out of time and we don't have time to ask him or he forgot what you're supposed to ask. So just make sure you're using those. All right. So yeah, you started by just knowing your market better than anybody. That was the number one secret to success for you is all knowing the market better than anybody. And then um, you had another, you know, and I'm going to kind of, I, I know your story, right? And I know that you think, because I'm in your same thing, I've told my story so many times, who doesn't know it? But I don't think these guys and gals necessarily know it. And I've told my story like 200 times on stage, right? So I'm like, everyone knows this story. And it comes to find out that they don't. Sure. So um, you have another rule. Uh, you, see, you did have a rule when you were starting. As you get busier, it gets to be a little bit tougher to keep that rule going. You had a rule that when you were starting about accessibility. And yeah. so if you tell, that was another differentiator for you, right? Talk a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I, my, my clients will tell you and, and agents will tell you, I, I pick up the phone at all times. It doesn't matter if I'm in the shower, if I'm sleeping, if it's three o'clock in the morning, I pick up the phone. Um, my biggest pet peeve when, when going to schedule a showing uh, with another agent is is not getting in touch with them. Our, our, our job is 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 this, right? And so, uh, you know, I, I have clients that, you know, I, I've been with me for a decade now, big developers that, uh, 
you know, will call me and I'll be in the shower and they'll, they're like, what's in the background? And I'm like, hey man, I'm in the shower, I'm sorry. Dude, you can call me back. Um, <laughs> and, and it sounds funny, right? It sounds funny, but at the end of the day, my I'm always there for them. I'm accessible at any time. And that's really, really, really important, right? Well, you gotta think the majority of people, this is the biggest asset they will ever, ever purchase or sell in their lifetime, right? And so uh, it can be stressful. Uh, it can be stressful. It can be, it, it's, it's extremely important for them. So they wanna know that you're there uh, on their team at all hours of the day uh, because it's important to them. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money and, 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 and that you're focusing on their, their properties or, or, or what they're looking for. Now you do a lot of luxury, obviously 119, 100, almost 20 million. It's like 119 and change and the change is like almost a million. Um, right. That's some pretty serious luxury. Right? Well, you, can you, also, you do everything though. Like you got some, uh, you got some other stuff that goes on there too. Just like normal people pants on one at a time um, deals that happen too. Right. 100%. So we treat every client exactly the same as you should. Um, but we'll do it. I mean, I'll sell a shack in Russia. I, I mean, <laughs> I'll sell whatever, you know, you got an ice cream truck, I'll sell it. Um, so yeah, we, we, it's not like we focus on just high end luxury. And I don't think you should, especially right now with where the market is. Um, I think you have to, you have to kind of go all over the place. Um, uh, the, Right now, you know, you're seeing because of lower inventory, the lower markets, especially in Southern California, anything below a million is just moving like hotcakes. Um, uh, you know, the, the higher and the ultra luxury market right now is a bit of a standstill, understandably so. Uh, you have a lot of bargain shoppers out there. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're all over the place, man. Yeah. So, but you did get your start. One last story, and then we're going to talk about what you're doing now, why you're doing it. But you did get your start in luxury after grinding and trying to get it with a cool story too. I think it involves a red Ferrari. No, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So tell them that story. Like, cause this is, this is the lucky break, by the way, this is yeah. like, because I was out grinding and my wife, right. She works luxury now, but she did it because she was out door knocking one day, found this person and it launched into something 11 years later. It's a completely different world for her. Same. There's sure. always that lucky break that you get for grinding. What was yours? That's it. So I used to, I used to button up. I used to wear a button down and some jeans. I'd go to other people's open houses just to see what's on the market. Um, Again, knowledge is everything. Uh, and while I was at a house up in the Bird Streets, a gentleman rolled up in a Ferrari and, uh, you know, he asked me for, uh, you know, where we were sitting there chatting. We went to another property, met him at the same property. And, you know, I said, what are you looking for? Blah, blah, blah. I'm an agent. And he says, you know, I'm actually a, a developer and I'm looking for stuff up here. Uh, you know, do you know of anything? And I said, oh, yeah, I, I have a bunch of off-market properties up here. Well, candidly, guys, I had absolutely nothing. I had nothing <laughs> at all. Um, and so the first thing I did is go straight back to the office. And I called probably every single real estate agent in Los Angeles County, asked for streets off market. And funny enough, I found two properties. And uh, we sold those two properties for nine million bucks. Uh, and that client is still a client uh, of mine to this day. No. Yeah, so you fake. That's a classic example of fake it till you make it, right? Like, oh yeah, I got off market stuff. I'll get you a list of them tomorrow. Yeah. And then you went and found them and called them up tomorrow and said, okay, here's a list. You want to go see them? Yeah, and it, look, at the end of the day, some people look at it as an untruth, and I I don't feel that way because at the end of the day, anything off market is kind of there's no exclusive relationship with any agent, so it's just a matter of finding it, right? Uh, it's like dig digging for treasure. Um, and, and some people just aren't willing to reach out, you know, that the agent that represent those two properties was happier than, you know, pig and poop that, that I brought, <laughs> brought a buyer for him. So he wasn't complaining. He wasn't complaining. Right. Right. All right. So then, so now you got your, you got your feet wet, you're doing stuff, you're killing it. You're crushing it last year, top 10 in the world. Um, and, uh, I have no, like, I literally reached out to you on Instagram right, right one day and I was like, dude, you've been up there for a long time. Like what's going on? What did I miss? Right. And he's like, he's like, Oh, well actually 
So talk about that. What are you doing now? Yeah, yeah. So now um, I'm, I'm opening a shop in downtown Bend. Um, my family lives in Sisters, Oregon. I've been to Bend for the last 20 years of my life. Uh, probably one of the coolest places on the face of the earth. If you haven't been, you do need to come. Uh, it, it's, it's immaculate. But that being said, Bend is seeing a mass um, migration. We're seeing roughly about thirty to 40,000 people a year. Moving in or out? In. 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 Okay. In. And so uh, it's good. It's good. It's, uh, excuse me, I got to pull something in my tooth here. Um, no, it's very good. It's, 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 everyone's moving in. Uh, uh, the market's crazy. And not anything under a million dollars, again, uh, I think is staying on the market less than 24 hours. Um, we're starting to see... Uh, this really mass development in Bend, Oregon, which is awesome. Uh, and, and we just saw that it, it made sense. It made sense. Uh, so that's our first project is, is the office is actually being built out as we speak. Uh, we are operational. We have about seven agents under us. Excuse me. Um, and, uh, and, and we're excited. Next thing is uh, possibly Portland. So, and when you say we, now you have an ownership stake in this Maybe not the one down in LA, right? Because somebody else already has an ownership stake in the Beverly Hills deal. But you've got Correct. an ownership stake in what you're doing up in Oregon now, yes? Correct. So I'm, I'm the owner uh, with my partner, Paul Benson, who's actually the owner down in the Los Angeles office. Okay. Um, Paul and I, great friends. It made sense when he knew that my family was from up here and I told him I wanted to open. He said, dude, let's partner. Let's do this. He's the largest franchise owner in, 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 in all of Angle Volkers and it just made sense. We, we, we work well together. Um, so we did that and yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty excited. We're moving pretty quick here. So let's talk about, uh, yeah, we're going to open an office. Woohoo! Hey, no one's allowed to go to offices and we're going to shut everything down. Welcome to the longest month of the entire world of history, March. Um, it was the longest month by the way, until April came. Yeah. <laughs> that turned out to be an even longer month. So, um, so how did, you know, now not just being an agent, but also kind of helping other agents um, go through the COVID time. I'm not talking post-COVID. Let's talk about June in just a minute, June 4 in a minute. But, that, but March through May, what was that like for you guys? And how did you get through it? And how did you muscle through it? And how did you keep your head in the game? Just talk about that for a little bit. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so first off, I've been saying this since day one when COVID hit. I said, you're going to see a mass exodus from the larger cities into secondary cities, which uh, Redfin came out and said that they're doing. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. I don't know why. I have the <laughs> um, uh, and so, and Redfin CEO actually just came out, what was it on Bloomberg or CNBC the other day, said, hey, listen, we've seen in our data more people searching for rural homes uh, now than we ever have in Redfin history. And so I called that, kind of saw that coming. Um, but that being said, look, during COVID, especially those months that we were under quarantine, wasn't the time to try to pitch or sell it. Look, everyone's hurting. Um, there's a lot of people that lost their jobs. I think it, 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 part of this job is being genuine and moral and ethically right to your clients and, and, and building, again, building those relationships. So I reached out to a lot of my clients just saying, hey, look, I wanna make sure you're okay. Is there anything I can do to help you out during this time? This isn't a call about real estate. It's just a call about your well-being. If it's anything, if I can talk to you, if I can just help you out in any situation, if it's food, if it's anything. Um, I thought that was important. And that's, you know, you bring up an interesting point, by the way. You, uh, because you, you, because I think a lot of people did that. I think a lot of, you know, obviously I, I talked to quite a few agents um, in, in different markets. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are having that conversation, but I think you did it differently, oddly enough, in that you called them. Correct. I think a lot of people are relying on texts, emails, social media messaging, mm -hmm. and we're still afraid to pick up the billion dollar machine right and make that actual call rather than hey if you need anything i'm here for you hanging in there which is great but that phone call how much how much more powerful was that right well there's something to be said to hear someone's voice right and just hear the concern and the actual genuine 
you know, concern for their well-being instead of saying, hey, I'm just reaching out to you via text, which as we all know, texts can be misconstrued or people take them the wrong way. Um, and, and they think, hey, they, they're just reaching out to see if I'm trying to sell my home. And, and so I wanted it to be as genuine uh, as possible. So I did reach out to my clients via phone calls. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right. And then things start to get better. May was not bad. It wasn't July, it wasn't June, sure. but it, it sure wasn't April. So things start to get better in May. And then in June, they get good. Mm hmm. Like really good. So what did you do then to start? So to we're, we're, I can tell you, especially on the high end, we have four or five clients right now. Currently just, I mean, we're throwing offers in every day. Uh, big money's playing because they see some bargain shopping. Uh, I, I, you know, in Orange County, I'm, I'm not as familiar as, as Los Angeles County with, with new developments and also high, high end luxury. Um, but uh, you've seen some some major price reductions or people just trying to get out some developers are just carrying too much debt that they just had to unload um i can tell you there's one specific developer i'm not going to name his name um but he's probably one of the largest in the united states and he's taken a massive hit um 50 uh, on his on his properties he'll he's willing to part ways with um, but then, you know, so, so we have clients out there that, that, that are, are bargain shopping. Then on the other side, when you're looking between 2 million, 2 million and below, again, very, very low inventory, right? And so you're seeing a lot of people that were living in, in condominiums and, and, and apartment buildings in Los Angeles that do have money because it's very expensive just to rent in Los Angeles. They're saying, what the hell am I doing? Right? Uh, rates are extremely low. Um, let me get the heck out of this so I can actually have a yard or, or my own home. Uh, and so, so it's been great. It's, it's, been, it's been really good. It's been really good for our, our buyers, um, our sellers. I, I specifically sold my home down in LA um, for $250,000 higher than what I paid for it three years ago. Uh, so, so the market's good. The market's good. Um, I think we're starting to see a bit of a slowdown again, um, which, uh, you know, is not un unexpected with, with what's going on with the, the rates uh, or, or the COVID rates, that is, uh, of how many people are getting it and worrying about quarantine and where the economy is going. Um, I, I think we'll probably see, a, you know, another lull here, uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, it's part of what we're going through in, in this new world. So let's talk about Orange County real quick, just because these guys are from Orange County, right? And sure. I'm from Orange County, so I have a really good understanding. I'm like, you're, I'm LA, so you're Orange County to me. Like, I'm like, I don't get it. Um, but yeah. we're seeing, and just because you mentioned that, we are seeing, like this past weekend, you know, I work with a team um, and, and help develop and, 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 and guide a team here in Orange County. Mm -hmm. um, and this weekend, we had three different, we meaning they, I never, ever see the general public, um, they <laughs> <Stay in house. laughs> yeah exactly it's a wizard behind the, the curtain yeah. um, they had three clients looking between 1.5 and 2.5 all from Brentwood or Santa Monica condos um, which the makes condos sense. were worth 1.8 to 2.7 million dollars for 1800 ish square foot condos in those areas right Mm -hmm. You know, you can get for $2.4 million out here, you can get 6,000 square feet. You can get a half to three quarters of an acre equestrian if you want. And they're like, are you kidding me? This, you guys are like, give them this stuff. And we think our houses are expensive in Orange County. They're like, sure. you're giving this stuff away compared to what I'm paying in LA. So we're seeing a migration in right now too from our urban area is LA, obviously, because they don't have to go to work anymore. Well, sure. So you have to think of it. Uh, Orange County is essentially a secondary city to Los Angeles, right? So. Yep. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, affordability is much better than, than a lot of places in LA uh, just on living, right? And so, uh, and so it makes sense. And, and, I, and I called this months ago. I think I called it the first week in March. I, I knew you were going to see it. Uh, but you're going to see it. You're going to see it for a while now, Dan. Um, I think Orange County is going to see a lot of people moving 
Um, I can tell you, I have some friends currently looking in Orange County. Yeah, it, it's uh, that crazy. Are, that are realtors, <laughs> um, I, or I give you guys their names, uh, but they are looking in 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 uh, Orange County just because they said, "Look, what am I doing? What am I doing here?" Um, it, um, so I get it. it. It it's it's just what we expect. Yeah, everything here is multiple offers. Everything like not just multiple; it's like two or three, like eight to ten. Yeah. Right? Um, 50,000, 100,000 over lists is not uncommon right now. If you really want to have a legitimate shot at getting it, like it's crazy. And so that, that's not going to always continue, but it, it just like it takes a, a while for a machine to get going. It also takes a while for a machine to put the brakes on. Um, and so we've got some momentum right now in all areas, I think that are really interesting. Um, Jeff has a question for you. He's actually just part one and a part two. Is your goal to grow your bend office slash team and reduce your personal business? Um, or if not, how do you plan to continue both efficiently? So you're trying to take a, a backseat to selling and become more of a leader. Um, or are you trying to like, no, I, I want to sell and lead. Like kind of, I think that's the question for part, part one. That's a really, really good question, Dan. Um, I'm actually, so I will not be an operational broker here. I'm not selling. Um, I, I won't be selling. I'll into my office, um, I, I, you know, one thing that I always found when, when you know, as, a, as an agent and going through LA and going through the recruitment of cert, certain brokerages, trying to recruit me, that I never wanted to be a competing broker with my agents. You know, I, I, I felt that, you know, uh, that's a difficult position to be in. Um, I want to be there to support my agents as much as possible. Uh, so in, in, in Oregon, 100%. So it's just going to be a kind of a, a focus on managerial and, 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 and helping my agents to the best benefit, uh, which has actually worked out. Um, we have some big developers that we're, we're planning on working with and signing some contracts with here um, that are some big time deals, uh, which we're extremely excited about. Um, but with LA, I'll still be operational. I'll still be working. You know, I'm going to be down there at least twice a month. I have my team down there, Justin Fierro, who's uh, my my main guy that leads my team down there, uh, is great. He does excellent business himself, and I, I have full trust in him. But if I do need to be down there, I will. Um, that being said, a lot of our business um, and a lot of my clients know that, look, at the end of the day, as long as Justin's there to show the property, I can do the other side of it, you know, and, and, and candidly, you know, I, I can, you know, with a computer in, in my hands, I, I can do a majority of what needs to be done to get my clients the best prices or the best, you know, uh, you know, deals that they, they, they can, they can get. Gotcha. Part two is you are clearly a, a people person, by the way, everybody, if you have other questions, um, please throw them in Q and A. Um, you're clearly a people person as it relates to our industry. How heavily do you lean on tech and what tech do you use the most? So that's a good question, Jeff. Um, I, now, do, I, now do you, I, I don't know if you're asking, do I use tech with, with, with you know, building relationships or, or not? I can tell you, you know, with just a social media influence, I know that there's there's some of my colleagues that I'm friends with that are on TV shows that may not uh, get, you know, give answers when they, when they get messages from, from agents just because they're so busy. Um, I try at least once a week to reach out to every single person uh, that has questions. Uh, I believe I come from a place of of good karma and, and giving back to the people uh, that asked me questions. I was in that position at one point too, where I didn't know where, you know, where I was going and I needed some advice. And, and I felt, I, I feel it's always important to give back. So, uh, and, and again, those relationships that, that I'm building just off of social media will come back to benefit me down the road. We'll do business in some sort of way. Um, if you're talking in regards to tech on, on, you know, a marketing basis, uh, we do, we do do some heavy tech. We, we, we tend to uh, focus more on the PR side than, than the tech side, um, just because um, on a PR basis, it, it, it really gets to the high end or the luxury clients that we're really looking for. Um, uh, if it comes to, if you're discussing tech on, on a basis of, of trying to get clients, um, 
we don't do so much. I, I, I again, I'm, a, I'm more of a face-to-face -face person, and, and and getting in front of people and talking to them, I think that's important. I think um, Volkos probably has some sort of tech suite that's just built into the brokerage that you EV just it's just kind so of automatic, much, right? Oh my God, T EV has so much tech uh, uh, support; it's it's unreal. Like I, I I go on the back end of the site, and I'm just like it. For, and maybe because I'm computer illiterate for the most part, uh, <laughs> but but even some of my agents here were like, oh my God, I can't even believe the stuff that they provide. So uh, yeah, I mean, even, you know, the MailChimps of the resorts, if you want to talk about that or the CRM databases, or, I mean, there's so many friggin' things that I, I, I don't even know what to do with sometimes. Um, and that's essentially to be candid with you, um, one reason why I, I bought out the franchise here is because I feel like Angle Volkers uh, is second to none when it comes to the support, especially on the tech side. Kelly, with the hyphen in her name, Dahl, Cha Chaplin Dahl. Is that I'm not reading that right, but it is Chaplin Dahl. Um, starting over in a new market with the social distancing climate we are in right now, what do you think is the best way to get your name out? Because that's interesting, because for newer agents, whether you're going into a new market or you're a new agent, you're kind of facing the same hurdle. From a knowledge standpoint, you gotta learn BIN, just like you knew the Bird Streets. From a circle of influence standpoint, you might not have what you have in LA. So there's a lot of that goes hand in hand, experienced or not experienced by moving into a new market. So I think this helps a lot of people, is what are you gonna to do to get your name out? Like how, what are you relying on to build those face-to-face -face relationships when everyone's behind a mask face? Well, first of all, that, that's a great question, Kelly. Um, first of all, if, you're, if it's a new market, one thing that I, I've been on a bunch of these calls and one thing that I keep saying is that you should utilize this time as much as possible to do what I did back in those first six months of my business to just, just, just to dial everything in. Know absolutely every possible thing you can because when you do have those conversations, right, you just want to be able to right off the bat and they're like, wow, Kelly really knows what she's talking about. So that's number one. Number two, so these are the times you want to use those so social media aspects to reach out and just connect, right? Um, also, one thing that I've learned from my one of my very good friends, a, a gentleman, Francesco Foggia, is one of the top uh, LOs over at Bank of America in the entire country. Uh, you know, he used to sell uh, he used to sell life insurance. And, and what he told me, he says, Sam, you know, when you ask for the business, you, you, you know, you, you do a deal and you ask for business and you sit down with your clients and take them out to dinner and coffee or whatever it is. He goes, oh, you, you know, you ask them for the business. They say, oh yeah, well, it will definitely refer you. Right. But then you never hear anything, right. You never hear anything. It's never. So what he would do is he would actually go onto their LinkedIn, their Facebook, their Instagram, and he'd pick out 10, 15 people. And he, and he pull out a list from his pocket and say, no, I actually want you to introduce me to these people. I understand they may be working with other brokers and that's fine. I'm not trying to, to get their business. I'm just trying to build my sphere of influence and I'd love for you to connect me with them. And so I think it's it would be a good idea to reach out to some of your, your current friends in, in, in you know, the location that you are uh, and say, hey, look, I, I, you know, introduce me to your friends. I want, I want to get to know people. That's it. This is a, I, I can't stress this enough. It's a relationship business. Uh, it's a relationship business and it's a service industry. Uh, once you get past the fact that this is in the sales industry and it's a service industry, you'll do much better in your business. Yeah. Again, just, just build those relationships as much as possible, as much as possible. And it's not a, and it's not, it's not a, you know, you know, we, none of us want to give the timeshare guy our three friends that they can go hit them up to. Right. Mm -hmm. None of us want to give the guy at the county fair um, our three friends' names so they can hit them up as well. It's not that. It's like, hey, I, don't, I know they don't need me right now. I just want to meet new people, meet your friends. I like you. You like them. Maybe I'd like them too. I don't know anybody here. I really want to start growing this area. I really just want to build my service. Maybe someday, five years from now, they'll have a question and I can help them. Exactly. Exactly. You're, you're right on point. And to extend on that, uh, you know, I remember w one of the first years I was in real estate, um, one of my very good friends ended up posting on his Facebook, uh, you know, that he bought a condo, million dollar condo, very good friend, didn't use me. And I said to him, I said, man, 
what's going on? And he goes, uh, oh my God, dude, I completely forgot that you were in real estate. Um, so I think it's, it's important, yeah, essential to use your social media, use, use, use that time to reach out to people just to, sometimes it's just that, oh, I forgot Sam's a realtor, right? Dan's a realtor. I got to use him. I forgot. What am I doing? Right. So, so it, it, those touches, those small touches that you reach out to people really, really benefit you in the long term. But, and I think the social media is like your air support. That's not the message. They're not going to be like, oh, look, a realtor. I should call them. Correct. Right? That's not enough. Um, no. But it's those touches in between Correct. When, you were, when you were making contact and having dialogue and being a people person. Those are the re- support to remind them. Those aren't the drivers. The drivers are you talking to your people. Right? Correct. It's, it, it, yeah, it doesn't do anything to put on your social media a bunch of real estate posts and, and not reach out to the people that you need to reach out. Those touches are, are, are central. Um, another question, coaching. Coaching. Uh, do I do it? Yes, I do it. Um, so so, so the, catch, the question is, and I'm not sure which way he's going with this, so I'll leave it up to you. Coaching, yes or no? Yeah, I, I do do coaching. We, we, uh, I've been doing coaching for a little bit here. Um, we, I kind of ramped down when I came down to Bend. Uh, we will be, I'll start it back up soon, just with the demo and TI work and stuff like that. But yeah, we, we, I, I definitely do it. My, my girlfriend at the, at the moment is trying to force me to do it because I think I'm, I'm probably drew, pu- making her pull out her hair. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Um, all right. Keep the questions coming. If you guys have any, let us know. So, all right. Now we've talked about before we've talked about what we're in now. Let's talk about October, November, December. Sure. Let's talk and let's, let's go look pretend world because mm-hmm. if we still can't open a restaurant and we still have to wear masks and, every, and, and everything's just the way it is today, then October, November, and December will kind of be, I believe, just like it is today. But let's play pretend world here. And in September and October, the NFL starts, people start going out a little bit more. Maybe we lose this second wave and who knows, or it turns into a third wave and people just get acclimated to it. But more things are open. It seems like more is happening. It seems like life is getting back to its new normal a little bit more. Let's pretend fantasy land for the fourth quarter. What do agents do to succeed then? Uh, so candidly, I, I, I would love to see that happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't happen. think it's going to. I think it's going to be a lot like now. So, but I want to go into pretend land and then come back to the now. So if it sure. did, so, what would so, you suggest? So pretend land would be, look, if that happens, depending on where the economy is, people start getting their, their jobs back. Um, view line, you know, in the economy, which would be great. We'd get back to normal and, 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 and start things over. That being said, I, 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 think, uh, I, I think that's probably unlikely. I think if you're an agent right now, it's, it, it's smarter to focus on buyers. Um, uh, because uh, right now it's a buyer's market. We know that. I think it's going to continue to be a buyer's market. I think it's going to be extremely difficult um, to find. I think you're going to have very low inventory. So, you know, it's great if you have listings, 100%, if they're, if they're priced right. Um, but I, you know, I think it's going to be a grind to get those listings. Right. A lot of buyers, yeah. few listings. Yeah, so there's going to be so little inventory. So I think this is a time to really kind of look and pivot if you are uh, towards uh, focusing on buyers just because I, I, I think that's where the real, the real plays are and, and, and the real opportunities. And then somebody asked, what do, do you think a new agent should have a niche? So that, there's that overplayed, the, niche, the riches are in the niches, but it is true. That's why it's overplayed um right but so talk about that do you think a new yeah. agent should have a niche uh, i don't think i think um i think your niche should just be knowledge again i don't think uh, we do across the board i don't think there 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 should be a niche i i, I think um anyone that does that kind of positions themselves and um and then it's very difficult to get out of that um so you know i think it's 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 better to have a broader uh, scape of, of, of what's going on and, 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 and business because of situations like COVID yeah, uh, right. that, that, that force us into it. 
you know? Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't suggest going into a niche market. Let's talk about that though. So, and then there's, there's another question on here, but let me talk about that real quick. Cause from a knowledge standpoint, LA is really difficult to know all the neighborhoods, right? Might be the most difficult in the entire country. Um, just from a, when we say LA, um, we're not talking about city of, it's county with all of its outlying areas and millions of units. So yeah. that's really hard to be super knowledgeable about millions of units. So how did you scope it down in the beginning? Like, what did you focus on? So I focused on individual, lo like little subsections, right? And so what I did was um, essentially on that subsection, whether it be Hollywood Hills, Bird Streets, Bel Air, Brentwood, Santa Monica, pa Pacific Palisades, uh, West Hollywood, Holly Hills, downtown LA, uh, East Hollywood, um, Los Feliz, even to the Valley, Sherman Oaks, Encino, Tarzana, and just I literally, I just let it into my brain, just burn that into my brain of what those price per square foot. And who, my biggest thing was price per square foot in that area. What's, what's the style of the homes that are selling that location and who are the big players in that location? Um, and so that was my, 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 essential the three things that I wanted to know for everywhere and then when it came down to my my main focus area uh, uh, i.e you know the bird streets or uh, beverly hills or or, or homni hills that's when i started to really dive in um and you know i would know what the couch looked like in the house you know? yeah there's a story tell so everybody there's a story like i've heard it before right because we've seen each other on stage a couple of times so we all have different stories that we kind of rely or fall back on sometimes Sometimes he tells it, sometimes he doesn't, but he's in a gym. Yeah. And a guy's like, uh, he's like, oh, where do you live? I was like, oh, I live here. And he's like, where do you live? He's like, oh, I live here. Like, oh, really? Like, where, where out on that street? And the guy kind of looks at him weird and he says, well, over here on this. And he says, oh, that's the one with the red door, right? And the guy like freaked out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, I live in my house. And, and he, I was like, oh, yeah, you have that L shaped couch in your house. And he was like, dude, have you been to my house? Like, <laughs> or something? And I was like, no, I've never met you in my life. And he was like, dude, how do you know that? But it was my job, right? That's what you, like, something like that, you tell someone that, they're like, oh, my God, it blows their mind. You study every picture that was on the MLS yes. from an expired, because yeah. when, they're, when, they're, when they do expire and you meet them in a gym and you're having that conversation and you're like, you got that brown leather L-shaped couch in there, right? They're like, have you seen my house? No, but I do know you were for sale. I know exactly. everything there is to know about every single house. That's a high level of knowledge which the consumer is like, holy crap, right? They don't yeah, get that out of most agents. I ended up selling a house for three and a half million. Yeah, right? Because uh, just, yeah, yeah. in the gym, the guy's yeah. like, are you a stalker? <laughs> yeah. He was like, well, you, had, you know my house. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, Are you a proponent of buying leads? So, uh, no, no, um, I'm not. Some people are, uh, again, I you have to look at the percentage and analytics on it and, and how many, uh, you know, how does it work? Does it make sense? How much am I paying for those leads? How many of those leads does it make sense? Um, we've done it before. And at the end of the day, it didn't make sense. If you find someone that's great at finding good leads, possibly, uh, it's just something that we don't get. And so, and here's what's super interesting, everybody. I want to point this out. This is why I love these. Uh, is because so often right now when I'm asking Sam, and like earlier when we got on, see that little gold trophy up there? Sam's like, that's a really interesting backdrop. Like almost like, is that a Zoom backdrop of just a bunch of shit behind you? Um, but then he saw that thing. He's like, wait a minute, because he got one of those when we were in Dubai too. And we were like, do you know what it says yet? He's like, no, because it's written in Arabic. So neither one of us know what it says. Um, that, that like the sheik gave us for like, thank you for being here. Yeah. But everything that we do in our business, guys and gals, um, like not that I do, but the, the teams and, and people that I work with do is different, right? Like, like, like I'm a big proponent of buying leads. Sam's like, don't buy leads. I'm a big proponent of niche or niche. And Sam's like, yeah, not so much about that. Right. It's really interesting. And so what I want to point out to everybody is there's no right way or wrong way or certain way of doing business. There is a few fundamental things that we have in common. You have to talk to people. You have to be available and accessible to people and, and be there for them. You need to continuously reach out to them. You have to have a high level of knowledge, right? And to impress upon them. We've got some fundamental uh, things for the foundations of our, of our ideas of business that are the same. 
but then how we execute are completely different, yet we can both run successful businesses or I can help other people run successful businesses with that in mind, right? 100%, you're absolutely right. You hit it on the head. I, I, I tell all my agents this, look, I'm good at, at this, the face-to-face -face interaction and, and sitting and talking with people. Not everyone is, you know, I New York who kills it. I mean, he's doing 90 million a year and you'll never see him. He's I'm, I'm wondering, you cut out on me. I'm not sure if you cut out on everybody. I'm sorry. The name. So, so I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, so you're absolutely right. Uh, everyone has their own way. I'm very good at the face-to-face. -face. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's good at it. I have a very good friend in New York, does about 90 million. You will never see him outside, never see him just basically speak to someone in person. He cold calls all day long. He has a script along his wall and he goes by that script every day and he kills it. I have other people that are great. You know, when I was running a team at Nest Seekers, you know, I had 30 agents under me. Uh, you know, I had some that were door knocking and just killing, killing a door knock. You'll never see me door knock ever. Some of my, <laughs> ever, it just won't happen. Um, you know, some, some of my agents were good at, at, at doing, they would, um, they would do social media marketing and, or, or, or they would buy leads and they, they, they were good at it. So it's, 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 uh, you know, it, everyone is good at their own thing. So if you're talking about that as a niche, 100%, right. That that's them. If you're talking about a niche market, I'd say no. If it's a niche of, of how you do your business, 1000% because you're going to find that you're better at something than someone else, right? Or better at something than some, than something else, right? So, so focus on what you're really good at and use that to your ability. This is an interesting one. Um, and then as you're answering it, I'm going to unplug so I can hear you, but I want to grab something total. So I just thought of it all of a sudden, but somebody said, what is your, and I love this. This is like my favorite topic right now, right? What is your take on mindset in this climate? And is there a mindset that you would suggest? So obviously, you're going to suggest having a good mindset. But um, is there, you know, what is your take on mindset in this climate? How do you, and I'm going to rephrase that with, and, and how, do you, how do you work on it and keep it up? Sure. So that's a really good question. Um, guys, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of, of mind, body, and soul. Um, I, I, uh, I'm, you know, not, my, my girlfriend doesn't like it much, but I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning uh, every day. Uh, it's just automatic. I, I, I do yoga every day. I do meditate every day. I read for two hours. I work out. Um, I think it's essential. I think these are the times that we, we should spend and, and embrace um, the time to, to build knowledge, to educate ourselves, to learn more. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Um, you know, I, I, I know it's really tough, especially for the people that are home alone. Um, it, it's got to be tough, but you, you know, those things, those small things uh, will, will, will keep your mindset right. Um, if you're talking about mindset for, for real estate uh, and, and actually where it's going, um, I just think you, you have to be a, ahead of the curve and, and, and thinking of what, what, you know, plan A and plan B and plan C is and where to go from there. Cool. Hopefully that, uh, Walita, that uh, answers your question. Um, let me clear that one off of my screen. If you guys have any other questions, we've got a couple minutes left. I had to reach behind me um, to grab something, right? So I just got this. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. This is a total side note, everybody, but since I have Sam on the line here, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. And I don't know if you've read it yet, right? But I got my copy. Oh, dude, I haven't got mine yet. So uh, I, I texted him the other day. I was like, what the hell is going on? Bro? <laughs> so a good friend of our, both of ours, you guys, Cozy, and he actually made the, uh, it was like the four amigos, him and, and uh, Sam and I, and then Melody made the trip to Dubai together. Um, and, and, and I've had Cozy on, on one of my stages at events before and you as well, Sam, right? And so he, he's written a book, right? Yeah. So I have it, but I have not had time to dig into it yet. Um, but it does, I've read a couple pages here and there, and it does seem very entertaining, everybody. So um, I don't have book recommendations often. I'm going to give you one, right? His name is Kosi. You guys can, uh, F-bomb broke. Um, oh, yeah. Let's Get Rich is a story about this, this, this black kid with this ridiculous looking mohawk. 
um, and controlling up to, I think he's about $60 million in real estate uh, assets he now controls and how he's done it. So really good book, everybody. Kosi's uh, on uh, Amazon. If you want to talk about mindset, Alita, you you need to follow this guy. Kosi Staff, yeah. he's, he's one of my best friends. He's a sweetheart of a guy, but his, his mindset is better than anyone I've, I've ever met in my life. And when she said mindset, that's what I wanted. I was like, oh, that's exactly what brought it to my yeah. mind was yeah. that. On, on Instagram, he's uh, the, prop, the property owl, right? The property owl. Yeah. The property owl on Instagram. And it's like, I'd say nine out of 10 of what he's putting out there is typically mindsets to things. Yeah. And he's, um, he's just, just a wholesome guy that, uh, uh, that did it on his own. And, yeah. And, I, and that's what I love. You know, he's, he's a smart kid and he... And just like me, he, he believes in the idea of just giving back, you know, and, and how important that is. So, yeah. So when you said mindset, that's what's like, I got to take you off so I can go get this because I know that this book is going to be, oh, Cassie Unless says, you gotta get him on next day. Cassie says, let's get, let's get Kosi on. So, um, okay. yeah. So uh, that'll, maybe we will. So we can talk. I got to read the book first. So I got to crank it. That's actually, it's like he wrote it for real estate agents. Um, actually, it looks like to me, uh, he didn't even number the pages because I don't think he wanted people to know that it was a shorter book, but because he's written for real estate agents almost. No, I'm just yeah. kidding, guys. But no, it is a short, it's a fast read. It's almost like the size of my book, right? Failing greatly. It's like 110, 120 pages probably. Um, and it's a total story. Yeah. It looks like. Look, I look at who I have on the phone as we speak. <laughs> hey, look at that. We're, ta we're, we're talking about this. We're talking about this thing, trying to decide when we're going to read it. <laughs> guys you gotta follow Kosi trust me go follow Kosi I'll call you back brother alright man <laughs> that's funny so um uh, oh Walida uh, cool Walida reach out to me after. I think I told you to message me on social media because otherwise I have no way to find you um, right because me just finding a Walida in this world is difficult so make sure you message me on Instagram Facebook anything by Dan Smith um, you can find me and send me a message, a direct message, a messenger, PM me, whatever. Um, all those sites, by the way, also have like phone numbers to get a hold of me. So it's really hard not to reach out. So reach out and I'll get you your copy of your book, Walita. Um, all right, uh, man, we got a couple minutes left. Two things. Anything, anything big coming up in your world? Share, talk. Yeah, yeah, two things, two things. One, guys, if, if you don't take coaching from Dan, you definitely should. Well, well, here's the deal. I, I see Sam doesn't even know that I don't even offer it really anymore to the, oh, to the average consumer because I'm doing stuff like this now with the bigger associations. Read his that, book, please, the, because he's <laughs> a genius, all right? The man's a genius. He's really good at what he does. Uh, I, can't, I can't say that enough. Um, secondly, I do got to plug one of my awesome properties. We're talking about high-end luxury properties. We are, uh, I have a property, 1814 Marchita. It's an amazing house. I just had a super high-end celebrity uh, in there, and uh, he was renting it out for a year. Uh, but we are reducing the price to a pretty insane price. Um, it's going to be best price per square foot in the Bird Streets, and I figured I might as well fuck it. <laughs> there you go. So if anybody's got somebody looking in L.A., give them a price range so that at least they know what they're dealing with. Um, between five and 10, between 10 and 15, between 15 and 20. Like that way you don't got to scope it down, but at least I got to know what kind of, what guy they're working with. That's right. Uh, what, what, what price? Yeah. Did, like scope that down. Five to 10, so 10 to 15 14, or 15 to 20. 14,995 to 13,995. Okay. There you go. So you got to have a, you got to have somebody playing in the, in the, in the eight digit world, not the seven digit world. Yeah. Go check it out. You guys can check it out. I just put it all over my Instagram, 1814 Marchita. It's a crazy home. Um, it's done by a, a husband and wife couple, design couple uh, named Chacol is their company name. They were actually disciples from Frank Geary. Um, so it's a pretty insane house. Top, top, top of the line finishes throughout. So three pools. Kind of <laughs> three, pools. three pools in one house. That's no you joke. Have three pools, man. <laughs> you have $15 million house. You got to have three pools. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So um, anybody else have some questions for Sam before we let him go, dude? Thank you. I'm gonna talk real quick while we see if anybody else pops in with questions. Thank you for being here. I know it's been a, we've been we one we haven't been able to speak together over the last year probably just because seven months of it now got whacked off. So I miss seeing you. 
I'm glad you could be you on know, here. My love. Yes, I will. Get out to the Middle East soon again, man. That was yeah. Fun. Uh, yeah, um, that, was, that was awesome. We love traveling with you. We love seeing you. I, I miss driving up to Beverly Hills and having lunch with you. So uh, I guess I guess we will. I am not afraid to fly on airplanes, as it turns out. So we will maybe figure out a time to fly into Bend. I've been to Bend before. I got this little tiny airport going on up there. So it's, it yeah. works. Listen, if you guys haven't been, it is paradise. I mean, talk about the most beautiful place in the world. I, I live know. vicariously through your uh, your Instagram posts now. I get oh, to yeah. see it. I Oregon, saw your fourth on the on the coast. And, yeah. yeah, Oregon is just. I mean, it's 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 America's hidden secret. So. So, but well, thanks for being here for everybody. Um, Shannon says sisters is rad. Thanks, thanks Sharon. It, it really is. Um, and uh, dude, thanks for being here and sharing with everybody. I appreciate it. If you guys want to follow uh, Sam uh, anywhere here in social media world, his name's not all, it's not like close with the property owl. Sam, real official here. I'll put it down here to all the attendees and everyone. So, they can... so um, you can check him out on, on Insta or whatever. Uh, I think, uh, I think next two weeks from now, we got Eric uh, on here. So we got the oh, broke no. agent. We got the broke agent guys and gals who's uh, going to be on here in a couple of weeks. Who's also like a mutual friend with both of us. So. Well, that will be fun. And he's he's like you know he's so he's so funny um, when it's just him, but he's like so afraid of like people and spotlight. He's he's kind of pooping bricks right now, which is hilarious um. for that. <laughs> right? Yeah, totally hilarious. Um, uh, so there's his handle, everybody. And Jeff wants to know, on average, what does one million dollars buy you in Ben? Let's talk about on average, square footage. So I bought my house, it's 3,000 square feet and I ended up buying it for 850. So that can give you an idea right there. All right, perfect, awesome. Yeah. Um, so dude, thanks for being here. Don't be a stranger, thanks, let's keep talking. It's a pleasure, brother. All right, man. And OCR agents, thank you for being on and watching, supporting, I appreciate it. See you, thanks, uh, you in a couple of weeks. Thanks a lot. Take us thanks, out, Jonathan. Man.